Hi, welcome to Portland Film Beat. My name is Dave Poland, and my guest tonight is Ted Pfeiffer. He's an actor, director, writer, producer, and well, he's been doing this for a long, making films for a long time. He's done just about everything. Ted, thank you for coming. Well, thanks for so, having so me. So, me, where did you first, when did you first start making films? First started making films? Or being involved? Well, I would say you're, you're involved, you know, in, as a kid. Right. Sitting in a movie theater. Right, okay. You know, you start watching movies, you start seeing them, you start thinking, so you what would it be the, like to be up there? You were intrigued in doing it since you were very young. Then. Yeah, yeah, my first job, I uh, worked in a movie theater. Was oh, that right? Um, you know, loved it, loved seeing movies. Then I went and worked at a video store. So I could get even more. Worked at a bookstore. Started reading about movies. You sound like Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. <laughs> well, not a comic book store though. Okay. Well, yeah. Would you like to? Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously loved it, and then went to Mount Hood Community College uh, for television production. Okay. Because right. I wanted to go to you know so kind of get have training. more into it, um, and then that's when I really started writing. You know, at that point it was okay. like, okay, how can I put my thoughts down on the paper and try to create something? Okay. Right. Uh, well, we're going to talk about that. You've written sure. a lot of things. You've actually got. Uh, script completed 13. You have like, oh, where is it? Five projects in development. And you've got, gosh, I, I can't remember how many I wrote down, but you've got just a ton that you've written. And, and you just do a lot of writing. I'm real impressed by that. But you've acted in like eight films. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Um, Giggle, Dr. Giggles, well, since 1992. Yeah, it's been spread out, and you know, some things, some roles have been bigger than others. Um, some are just like a walk-on thing like that. Others are more of like a, a co-star. Right. And um, to me, it's all about just taking advantage of a situation, seeing if you can get on something, and, and so see how not, it goes. So you don't have a big ego about being the lead actor or anything like that. You just that this is what you like to do. You do it. Yeah, I, I want to be really part that. of the team because uh, making a movie is. You know, it's it's a community, and it's it's everybody going in together to try to come out with a product. Oh yeah, and it, you have to you check work ego to at the door. Well together. Uh, one bad person can really make it a lousy experience Definitely. for everyone on a film set. So, right. Anyway, so th you just fit. You we did shot a film that is back called Lockdown. Yes. Was that your first one? No. That that was the first one that I directed. Right. So and it was a short and. Um, I ended up acting in it because the morning that we were shooting the first day, <laughs> I got a phone call that my lead actor, his wife had gone into labor. Really? And so instead of, you know, shutting down the production for the day, I thought, you know what? I wrote the script. I know the lines. I might as well, as well jump it. in and do it. Sometimes and, you did. And so that was my first really writing, acting, directing, producing well, you had all in one. Dion Jennings. Yes. And Richard Topping were in yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I know both of them. They were great actors. They were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good time having them there and and they were really good about the fact that they knew that I had had to jump in right there at the last minute. No, Richard would de definitely both of them know. They know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. You know, they've been around the block a few times here. And and so something that you're just finished, you're in post production mm -hmm. with is called Hands of Time. Correct. Okay. Did you write that? I wrote that. Yes. And how long is it? Um it, it's a feature. So I'm currently editing it right now. Wow. Um and it was one of those situations where at the start of the year, I decided, you know what, in calendar year 2015, I want to write and direct a movie. And so I just put my mind to it. I wrote it. I picked out, I made it a single location. Kind of. Which, um, which is good <clears throat> because then you can shoot it quickly. Yeah, I kind of, I watched a lot of Hitchcock and Rope or Dial in for Murder and yeah. where they're, you know, almost like stage plays. And so it was really written almost like a play where there's long di uh, monologues and you know long scene long takes um for actors and stuff and right. so like rope <coughs> exactly <yeah. laughs> it's almost like a yeah so i figured go for that the would be shot. the way to you know be able to do it on a small budget in one location and just get some solid actors and and did, pull it off did you run the camera or did you have someone else i had somebody else peter fearman uh, ran the camera peter, for me so very well. i met peter uh, when we were both working on cabin fever um last year and you know, I felt comfortable with them and, you know, just talked about it and we kind of sat down and looked at the whole script. I gave him my vision, he gave me his vision, and we made sure it worked. Did you have a sound boom um, mic person? Yes, uh, Daniel Smith did the sound for us and he was fantastic and it, at one point we had five actors together at once so he had, you know, a, a lot of sound going in, he had the boom and everybody was mic'd and it was That's pretty but good. Just a, a, sound is a, really important. Yes, just a really solid job. Who were some of the main actors then? Uh, Justin Ament was the lead, um, and it was it was interesting because he and I had worked together on 
Harvest of Fear and Path of Evil back in 2004, 2005. <laughs> Quite we, a while ago. Yeah, yes. And then we kind of came, came together and said, let's make something. And I wrote it. I showed it to him. He jumped on board. We were able to get a little bit of funding. And um, so then we started to cast um, our lead actress. And what we did is it was all shot down at a bar. And what we wanted to do is we so wanted... you did use one location. One location. And what we wanted to do is bring all of our actresses down to audition at the location. So instead of just going into a stale room, they came down, they stood behind the bar, and they, they acted. They knew it. Yeah. So w w who was the lead? Uh, Lindsay Lucas became our lead. Uh, what the other ones didn't know is that I was actually looking at them for other roles as well while they were auditioning for that role. That's good. So um, you gave them parts. Yeah. And then who, the who? other nice thing is there's so much talent here in Portland right. that um, some of the actresses, like Nikki Flynn just blew me away, and Joanna Hart, and I ended up changing male roles into female roles okay because they were so solid right and after seeing them i knew they could do the job All right so what's the premise of hands of time uh it's basically a a man um logan rivers has got a lot weighing on him you know on himself stresses he goes into the bar one afternoon and through various interactions with these different patrons he regains his strength and faith okay it was shot in one location. Yes. Um, how many days did it take to shoot it? We shot it in um, actually eight days. We shot at the bar. One day we did at my house just to do some little, a few shots here and there, and then we did eight days at the bar. Um, did you, did you must have done that early in the morning or day then because it was a bar at night. Well, yeah. Uh, Barrel Room is uh, where we shot it, and they were great with us. They are open on the weekends, so we shot Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and then would turn it back over to them, and then we'd come back the next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And because of the way it was written, where there's these long takes, I wanted to give the actors that kind of break in between so they could learn their lines. And, right. And the other nice thing, too, is, you know, with the bar, we had to, you know, if you're shooting in the bar, you've got all those bottles back there, right? And you've got, you know, Jack Daniels and Malibu and all that, and you have to those. turn them around or whatever. Right. So I decided to go to local distilleries and ask them if we could show their bottles and so we're showing off Portland oh, distilleries, what a brilliant idea. gins and vodkas and whiskeys in our movie. Well, that's a brilliant idea. Because it, it's not just the film community. I mean, it's the whole Portland community that I wanted to kind of show off. <laughs> so they were great. So we would we'd take down all the old balls, put ours up, and when we were done, done shooting, just reverse it. Okay. So being time crunched, mm -hmm. I believe you were, yep. did, you must have spent a lot of time in pre-production with a shot list with Peter, um, things like that. Well, it, it was funny because my point of view, again, kind of going with he that. He has a slider, too, so you must He does. That. We use that a lot. Uh, but using the, the Hitchcock point of view is I really like long takes. Right. And so... Did you have the camera locked down most of the time then? For each different character that came in, we'd do a different take. So one time it'd be a slider, one time he'd be locked down, one time it'd be from up above shooting down. So we did a different stuff to kind of showcase each actor as they came in. Right. Okay, cool. And then the nice thing is is... I scheduled for 10 days, so I paid everybody for 10. Oh, you actually paid we the We shot actors. nine, so I had one in my back pocket. So as I'm editing it right now, I know there's some stuff I need to pick up, so I kind of kept that. Oh, nice. So we'll go out and shoot and just, you know, kind of I'm sure that they'd off. be generous enough to give you a day yeah. or two anyway, yeah. since I, you did pay them. Well, I think they need to be paid, and I, you know, cast and crew are paid. They were fed, and I, I think there's something about taking care of people. Right. If you treat so, people right, they're going to treat you right, and it's a small enough community that if you treat them wrong, People Everybody's going to know. Well, here's the thing is I a lot of directors wish they could pay their actors and mm -hmm. just don't, don't have the money to do that. And so I'm very impressed that you did. Did you do a Kickstarter or, or something else? We, we went to some people and were able to get uh, you know a little bit of money. Um, one day while we were shooting, we had some people come down and watch, and they were able to give us a little bit more money. Um, right. So it was, it was just something that we felt was important to right. make sure that you know the cast and crew were taken care of. Director, writer, producer, actor. I didn't take any. <clears throat> Some of the others didn't because we knew, you know, the people. That's okay. You know, we want them to work with us. Right. Um, so, so that being said, the pickup shots, are they going to be back at the bar again? Uh, no. We've got, we're going to do it in one other single location. Uh, what I found after editing it is we needed to get outside of the bar for a little, a little bit. bit. Uh -huh. You know, it gets claustrophobic, <clears throat> and it kind of works at times, but just kind of looking at the rough cut and stuff, I, I felt like we needed to get outside. Okay, so <clears throat> is this your first feature? This is my first feature directing, yes. Okay, and what did you learn during, the, during this experience? Uh, what I learned is that 
<clears throat> going in, I knew it's a very collaborative okay. um, film is, um, and sometimes you can be over collaborative. Sometimes I should have put my foot down when I okay. didn't. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, no, that's all right. You should. A, a couple of times, I mean, we were we were running really lean, and I mean, there were some time the day one we did fifteen pages. That's a lot of shooting. And we knocked fifteen pages out in six hours. That's a lot of shooting. You know, and I was like, you know, everybody's like, "What? We're done? It's only six hours." I'm like, "You guys did great. You did an amazing job. You did what I asked." Well, how many pages were in the script? Uh, it was eighty-seven. That's a lot. Yeah. And the actors must have been all memorized or off book. Or here's a question: So, mm -hmm. did you let them kind of let the, the the words roll off their tongue, or did you stick with? You have to say the words the way I wrote them. As a writer, I think that um, if the actor can get across the point I'm looking for with their own words, right. then that's fine. Good. But there are definitely certain Things you know beats you want to hit right. and certain words you want to use. And there there was one point where there was a monologue that I had written that was just really clunky, and I knew it. And so when Lindsay came uh, on board, I said, look, here's this spot, rewrite it if you want, <laughs> you know? And I think giving the as actor kind of that freedom. As long as it gets across the same, yeah. right, yeah, And that's so good. then she sent it over, we kind of went back and forth and figured out exactly how we mm -hmm. wanted it. But uh, I, I think it, you need to do that because, you know, actors need to be able to feel comfortable with what they're saying. Right, it's, that said, so did you rehearse before you went to the bar? Uh, no, no, really? we would do just a quick run through, but because we were kind of, you know, running short days, I figured let's just film the rehearsal. So was there a lot of blocking? Um, there was, and, and that was kind of the main thing, is I, we needed to make sure everybody hit their points. And you know, when you're working in a bar and you're pouring drinks, continuity is crazy. Because you bet. need to make sure all the glasses have the right amount oh my of liquid God. in Did them. Did you have a continuity person? Or? Um, everybody kind of jumped on board. Yeah, yeah. they have to keep a track yeah, of we, it. We they kind should. Of found out after the first day that everybody needed to kind of keep an eye and, and make sure we were all right. You know, so watching. did you have lights that you used or did you just use what was there? The nice thing is that um, Peter also did our lighting for us. He does a great job with that. And he was able to um, use some of the actual light that was there yeah. in the bar. The practicals. Yeah, and so the and that was a big thing for me because I wanted 360 degree shooting. I wanted to be able to just turn that camera around and shoot and not have to worry about stop, let's relight, that type Man, of thing. Man, that makes so it rough. There was, it was really just being really strategic about what I wanted to accomplish making sure people got in, got their stuff done, and got out. And, you know, I, I just, again, I think the main thing is, you know, we'd bring an actress in for a day, she'd work the day, and she'd leave. But I made sure that when she was walking out that door, she had a check in her hand. Good for you. You know, so there was no, you know, am I going to see this in two weeks, or am I going to see this whenever? Well, it's good for you to yeah. pay him like that. Yeah. That's awesome. It's, I, like I said, most directors want to, they just don't have the funds. Yeah, and so it, I'm really happy that you're going out of the way to do that. Yeah, and I just, I didn't, I might feel more comfortable now asking somebody to give me a free day here and there right? because they know how I work. right? But I think going in not knowing everybody, I think you need to, you know, show them how you're going right. to mm -hmm. do your job. All right. So what do you, you, you've written so many different mm -hmm. things. I, I would take it that writing is your forte then. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Directing and producing your pro and acting, you probably like doing it. Right. But really writing. And, and where do you come up with all these ideas? Because you've written probably... I know there's 13. I mean, I read there was probably another there's on your There's 20 some, yeah. That there's 20 some in the in the works. Yes. Which is great. Yeah, and then yeah. you've got five in pre-production. Is right. that right? Yeah. So where do you come up with your ideas? Uh, I think a lot of it is just people watching, mm -hmm. or just knowing watching situations happen. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, um, you know, I could sit right here and look into the control room and think, okay, what are they doing in there? But you come you know, up with because you've been that. interested in film for so long, right. your brain actually thinks about movies all the time yes. and writing them. Yes, well, yeah. that's awesome. Though. Yeah, and I it's, think that's it's really one good. of those things. That if it's flowing, it's it's great, and you know I can't stop. And you, you do have that writer's block, though. You right. know, you come up and you go, gosh, you know, I just can't come up with anything. And other right. days, it's just everything. So let, we, let's go back a second. Mm -hmm. How do you work with the actors then? Because you, you talked about sometimes you're a little bit too collaborative. Yep. Is that because you let their actors um, work on it on themselves without putting forth what you really want from them? Yeah, and I, I think since it was my really my first, you know, directing of a feature, and you're shooting out of order, it's trying to remember, okay, how should this actor be acting in this scene at this point in the movie? Right. You know, because they may be just killing it in the scene right then and there, but you may want them to be acting differently uh -huh. in, in, in a certain point of the movie. Okay. Uh, but I think it's sitting down and just being honest with them. 
and letting them know that, you know, as the writer too, don't be afraid to ask me if you can change a line. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to throw something out there. If I don't like it, I'll tell you. Right. Um, and don't be afraid to, you know, as you're going through it, you know, stop for a second and say, this isn't working. You know, because at some <laughs> points, I know from when I've acted before, you're going through a scene and in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, this is horrible. I just need to stop. You know, but you would just keep on going and keep on churning through. But I just tell them, if you need to stop, stop. If you don't want to, don't. Okay. You know, freedom. All right. It's so, giving them freedom. So do you edit your own films or do you have someone to edit for them? I'm editing this one. And um, you're using Premiere Pro. I'm using Premiere Pro. Okay. And I just finished a rough cut, and it's it's interesting to watch. Um, but what's more interesting, the the funny thing is listening to the sound and hearing the side conversations after it takes done. <laughs> what people are talking because their mics are still on and it's right. still recording. Uh, but it's it's interesting to to look at your vision that went from page to screen, and notice that you know what. What I wanted on the page did not translate. Oh wow! And so that's well, why you know, I mean, there's spots, there, and that's why we're doing well, these other days. You know, this the, other day that I need to pick up. There's the the film you write, mm -hmm. the film you shoot. Yep. And then there's the edited film. Exactly. It doesn't look like. Right. You hope it's close to it, but sometimes they can change. Right. So did you, did you have to do rewriting right on the set scene there to um, because it just didn't wasn't working, or did you add scenes? I'm I'm I have added some stuff and for this last day. Right. And that's again that's why I kept that in my back pocket that last day. Um, is because I had a feeling that there was going to be some things that didn't quite work. Right. As soon as you edit it, you go, hmm, yeah. you know what I need? This isn't yeah. there. It should be. Yeah. And I had a couple of producers. I had Peter take a look at it, and everybody sent their notes to me, and they were all the exact same stuff I felt. Right. It's so I felt people. great about that. I well, was like, oh. You know, if one person tells you it's one thing, but if two tell you, yeah. you got to look at yeah, it. Yeah, if one person, There's, it's uh -huh. opinion or creative difference. You know, right. the rest, if everybody else says it, it's okay. So something wrong. I'm going to ask this, although I think it's writing. Mm -hmm. What do you think is your film strengths as a filmmaker then, um, outside of writing? Outside of writing, you do a lot of writing. Do How, a lot do of writing. You, okay, let me back up. Yeah, we'll ask that question now. Okay. How many hours a day do you write? It uh, it really depends. It's funny because there'll be times if it, if all the ideas ideas are flowing, I'll lock myself in my office and I'll just write all day long. Um, and my wife will be like, "When you come to bed," and the kids will be like, "What? You know, when are you making dinner? What's going on here?" You know. Right. Yeah, time then, to make. You had time to get married and get calf kids. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's other days where it's just you know it's not flowing, so I don't write at all. Right. But to me, the act of writing is not typing. It's not writing with a pencil. It's what's going on up here. Oh, well, let me it's tell you, I do a lot of it. Churning, I work with my wife every know? day on writing, and, yeah. and I love working with her. It's, it's one yeah. of my joys. So life. you ask me how many hours? Probably all my waking hours. Or writing something. Yeah, yeah, something's I going that. on that's my wife gets crazy taking the next I, step. She can tell I'm thinking about something. <laughs> what, uh, so what is your strength as a filmmaker then? Um, it's funny. I think my, my strength and my weakness is both the collaborative piece. Okay. Because I, I, I think that I'm really welcoming and I really want, you know, everybody to be part of, of the, the final product. Right. Because if I'm making a movie and I don't have a sound guy, that well, there, there's no movie. Right. If I'm making a movie and there's no camera, there's no movie. Right. Uh, my son was home from college for the summer, and instead of not seeing him while we were shooting, I had him come on board, be a PA, and do Slate. Really? And so That's great, before though. every shot, I got to see his face did, did and he got to see him. You did know? he get a little uh, uh, hooked? He was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great. And it, it, at the end of the day, it was like, you know, you're sharing your passion with your child. And you're getting to work with them all day. Yeah. I'd love to do that yeah. with my kids. Yeah. So I'd I mean, there's it, it, again, it's you know, it's it's a family, it's a community, it's it's putting something together, and it's it's everybody working towards that goal, and everybody being on that same path. Okay. So since you you just shot a feature, and all the yes. other ones were shorts before this, right? Uh, two other features, Harvest of Fear and The Path of Evil, and 04 and 05 were features that I wrote. Those and were over ten years ago. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So what did you discover is your favorite part of filmmaking? Outside of writing. Outside of writing. You can't you gotta get rid of the writing. I, I think just you know, you hear this a lot, just being on set. I just loved being on set. It is. Long um, days but still. But in the, but there's uh, there's the creative piece of well, seeing your stuff come to life, but then on top of it, um, problem solving. Because that's awesome. There's always a you know, problem. And you're like, oh, how do we do this? Or how do we shoot this? Or, you know, I'll come in and say, I've got this great idea for a shot. And then they'll be like, well, you can't do that. Okay. So then, okay, how, do, how am I going to kind of twist it and do something else? All right. Since you've written a lot of screenplays, mm -hmm. do you read screenplays for ideas or to get, get an idea of how to write them? 
I do read about books like by John Truby or uh, Robert McKee or nope. any of those. I, I at one, it was funny because at one point I had gone to a conference and um, there's a screenwriting professional there saying, you know, talking about the three acts and how it has to go and all that. And I'm like, no, oh, that's, you know, you're crazy. Write your story. I'm just going to write my own thing. All my best scripts fall into the three acts. They end up that way. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. So to me, it's like I'm not going to go in thinking, okay, for the first thirty pages, it's got to end know, here, and then that, there. That it's whole just thing like, about just do it. the whole thing that doesn't work for me either. And this whole thing about plan it all out and mm -hmm. do all these things. I think you need to get an idea of what you, how you're beginning, middle, and end, yep. and what you want to happen, and then the characters start talking to you. Yeah. It's amazing how they they really do. After right. a while, you're like, whoa, yeah, where did that come? Well, how many from? times are all I'll start, you know, at the end and work backwards. Uh -huh. I'll write the end scene and just bring it on back. Okay. If you could get a director yes. to direct your next feature, an A-list director, who would it be and why? Living director? No, it could be a dead one. <laughs> well, be Hitchcock would be the dead one. Oh, but, okay. But you know who I love to, and it, it's crazy, Michael Bay is about not, as far from, you know, Hitchcock as you can get. It's like, you know, Rear Window and Transformers. I mean, <laughs> completely different. But Michael Bay, to me, I would love to just follow him one day just to see how he is able to put together all the scenes and all the action sequences oh and everything he's able to do. But you know, that's all probably all green screen. Yeah, but I mean, just to see how he's how he works it. I mean, there's so much going, so much going on. Um, I think he'd be a blast. Um, David Fincher is another one who I think would be just an amazing director right. to, uh, okay. to see. Uh, so as a director, mm -hmm. um, for your next feature, what A-list actor, and then again, what A-list actress would you like to have and why? Uh, that's interesting. I um, I love Tom Cruise because I think if you watch really his films, grown. he works his butt off in every one and gives I've it his all too. in every single thing. And he's done drama, he's done action, he's done comedy, he's done it all. Um, and it's not just because he's an A-lister and he's a star. I would just love to be surrounded by someone who searches for per perfection every moment of every day. Yeah, that's great. Um, and actress, I... I, I like someone like um, Jennifer Lopez. I mean, she's you know singer, dancer, actress. We were um, just talking about triple threat. Yeah, on the other can show. do a lot of different stuff, and it, it would be fun to kind of see. She can reach in a great emotional level yeah. too. Yeah, it'd be fun to see that creativity come out of you know how is she going to use her talents in a certain way. Uh huh. So, what is your favorite film of all time? Uh, depending on the day, it's always changing. One day it could be Rocky. One day it could be Star Wars. Uh, Halloween, um, but I think so. You like a, a, a whole range of genres. Yeah, I think Rear Window, though. I, I love, I'm a huge Grace Kelly fan, so Rear, Rear Window, Dial in for Murder, To Catch a Thief, any of those. North by Northwest is amazing. So it's, I mean, if if I'm sitting at home and I'm bored and I just need to watch something, I'll throw something to Hitchcock on. Hey, I still watch Hitchcock movies. There's, there, I can't think of the name of the one. I was trying to think of it, but I, I love that film. Um, so if you have any advice you could tell someone into getting into filmmaking, since you've been doing it for so mm -hmm. long, and I'm sure there's been some periods of time in your life where you didn't make a film for a year, right? but you were writing, Yep. what can you say to someone trying to get into filmmaking? Just what should they do? I think they should write. I think it's... Actors it's, need to write. It's find your passion and, and follow it. And don't be afraid to take a chance. And don't be afraid to, to look for opportunities. On Cabin Fever, I was doing locations and transportation. Right. That and was a horror film shot here? Yes, yeah. It was a reboot of the original um, from, uh, I think, 2002. Um, shot it last year um, here locally. And I knew there was going to be this huge scene at the, you know, at a certain point where there was police and fire and whatever. Well, I had a uniform, sheriff's uniform. So when that day came, you got costumes I knew then. I was done. I dressed myself up. I went walking out. They saw me and they're like, whoa, that's awesome. Here you are. Here you are. You're in the movie. Was Kevin so, Fever like? Is that a Hollywood film? Or oh yeah, Eli Roth uh, wrote oh. and directed the original. Right. Um, and but it was one of those situations where, you know, there was an opportunity, and I could have sat back and not did it. Done I'm it, glad you did. But that. I went and did it, and they said, okay, if I did it, and they said, get out of here, go back, and you know, you, you move do? a car. Yeah, I would have done you, it. You were a driver you know? too, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, so I was just kind of doing everything. You didn't lose anything. Right. I mean, you got to take bold, make bold moves sometimes. Yeah, and you right? just have to look for that opportunity and be passionate yeah, about it. And just, just go you know, big or go home. Yeah, and if you're on a movie, no matter what you're doing, if it's a if you're just starting out as a production assistant, work as hard as you can, 
do whatever you can for other people, and and work leads people to work. Will notice. Work leads to work. Uh, that's the the people I hired on Hands of Time were people that I noticed worked their tail off on other productions. Right. So, what do you consider the elements of a good film, and then again, a great film? I, I think a a good film. To me, that's kind of a loaded question. It is Be, because <laughs> because. Each viewer comes to a movie with their own personal baggage. Sure they do. And their own history. And so I can't answer what makes a good film or a great film. I can answer what makes a good film or a great film to me, and that's something that, that touches a nerve or touches something inside of me that, that brings emotion to me. Right. Whether it's, you know, tears or fear or mm -hmm. laughter. But that's not the same movie. It's not going to touch each person right, the same right. way. So, so you... you I noticed that in a lot of your films are either thrillers, mm -hmm. a lot of thrillers. Mm -hmm. So, is that your favorite genre? It is. It is. I, I just I like the um, the aspect of telling a story and having people kind of solve that mystery and mm -hmm. you know figure out who's doing what. You know over, what I mean? Right. So, and, Hands, and of, Hands of Time is a little bit of a thriller. Hands of Time is a a faith based mystery. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and when I say faith based, it's Whatever your faith is. Okay, right. All right. So, what's next for you? Uh, I've got a few in development right now, and then I just finished. Um, yeah, five in development. Yeah, and I just finished two other scripts that um, I have sent right, off really? to a couple of different producers to kind of take a look at. Uh, one is a real low budget slasher film, um, and then another one is a. Well, I don't want to give it away. Okay, that's great. So, where <laughs> do you hope to see yourself in five years? Uh, still making movies, whether mm -hmm. it's locally, whether it's, you know, right. more than that. But I, I, I think there's so much talent here that, you know, you can find people to work with and you can put out a good product. And at the end of the day, if I can do something that touches one person, that w if one person likes my movie, right. then I did my job. You did. Great job. Yeah. Ted, thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Anyway, we're running out of time here at Portland Film Beat. I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank Carol Poland. The executive producer, she does an awesome job. I want to thank Ellery Nelson, my director. I want to thank everybody down here at TVC TV for letting us use their studio. I want to thank also everybody down at Portland Community Media TV for uh, showing my, my show. And until next time, on Portland Film Beat, shoot for the silver screen. <laughs>